Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer card game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Saved the Game. Save the Game is for three to seven players. It takes about a half an hour to play, and it's for ages 17 and up, and that's because there's quite some language in the game, but otherwise it, it's fine. It just has, it's got some language, so. Um, in the game Saved, basically what's going to be happening is you are now at the gates of heaven with all of your friends, and... Uh, only one more spot is left for somebody and that person is going to be probably the most virtuous person although there is some changes depending on the types of religions and characters you get but for the most part whoever has the most blue or good cards are going to be the winner uh, and whoever has anything less than that player is going to lose the game. You're going to start with a religion as well as a character card, so maybe somebody like a Harbringer and Envy, and then you're also going to get seven saved cards in your hand. In the game saved, you're going to be playing a card down on a player face up, and that player is going to suffer either negatives or positives, depending on what you give them. You'll also have options to use your character ability, and then afterwards you're going to draw a card from the deck. If that card is a karma card, it could be good or bad for you based on what you played previously, and then after after that you're going to then end your turn if it's just a basic card and it's going to keep going around the table until finally it gets back to you and you're going to keep playing just like that halfway through the deck at any point in time you're going to have apocalypse and armageddon they're going to pop up and when those cards pop up one of two things will happen either the game will instantly end you're going to tally up the points in front of you or the game will make you dis card all your cards in your hand onto your tableau and thusly add all those cards into your tableau which could be good or bad and then the game will end so two different ways to win or lose i suppose and at which point the person who has the highest uh, virtue is going to win the game now of course remember one spot left and you're going to be the goodest person you possibly can but your friends are obviously not going to let you do that if they can help it in saved the card game let's take a look down below and see what you get so here we have save the game and as you can go ahead and see everything is laid out and ready to go everybody's got their seven cards to start with you've got your character cards over here here, and these are your religions, which are basically secret. Nobody knows what you get. And the way the game's going to work out is everybody gets, everybody gets those seven cards. You're going to take these two ending cards, cut the deck about half, and then put these on the deck and shuffle them in. Now they're going to go somewhere in the middle or uh, in you know, anywhere in this back end of the deck here. After you go ahead and do that, you're going to place this deck face down and put the top deck back on it, which means that halfway through the game, it could end at any point in time. It could be at the very bottom, could be up at the top there. Now, after that, every single player is going to get a secret religion card. Just go ahead and set that one of these down for each of the players. Remember, you have to have three players in this game and remove the rest. That's why there's a bunch of extra ones here, because as you can see, there's a ton of different religions here that uh, can be selected. On this side, I'll just tell you your score. You can get to like anywhere over a positive 100 or even lower than negative 200, but this gives you an idea of how, how good you've been throughout your life. Uh, these are the character cards. You're going to take these guys up. You're going to shuffle them just like this, face down, as well and this has the turn order which is nice as well and then you're going to play one for each player after that you're then going to go ahead and flip these guys over and then there is a number based on the uh, cards here so in this case here this is the one this is a four this is a five so this is the lowest which i believe is what goes first in this game uh, and then you're going to go ahead and uh, start the game off everybody has a special ability like this guy he can play an additional virtue card on uh, your own life deck during the uh, play phase. So that's pretty good. And uh, this guy over here says once per game at the start of your turn, draw any card from the discard pile. And this one over here says you can play a vice or virtue cards face down as opposed to face up. Nice. Well, let's go ahead and start. Now, if you want as well, if there's less uh, than the uh, six players or seven players, you can go ahead and give everybody an extra turn order card. This is just gonna help you know how to play the game. The first thing you're gonna do is play vice or virtue on somebody. And if you have any karma in your hand, like for instance, those cards there, you're gonna make sure that uh, you shuffle them back into the top of the deck somewhere. Uh, so that way they do not uh, stay in your hand. You have to actually have seven cards that are not vices, uh, sorry, uh, uh, so karma cards. Okay, so now we've got new cards here. Let's go ahead and select. So I could play this card here on me, which is going to give me positive 20, or I could go ahead and play on somebody else, which would probably not be what I would want to do. Instead, maybe I'd like to play a red card, this one here. Uh, this is a vice, and it's going to be minus, minus 35, and I could play it on this player or this player here. Um... Or I can use my ability. I can play an additional virtue card on my own life deck during the uh, play phase. That's pretty nice. Now this, of course, uh, action count counts as a vice if karma is drawn. So that's not very good if I play two on me if I get a 
if I get a karma, but playing two is not too bad when I'm going to score 40 virtue. So after that, I've played my card and I'm going to draw a card. And if this card is a morality, a vice, or a virtue, it just goes to my hand. If it's a karma, uh, let's go ahead and show you one of the karma cards. If that pops out, you're going to do what it says based on the previous card you played, or if the bottom rule of your character card changes it. So for instance, if I played a blue card on myself, I would do this. If I played a red card on somebody else, I would do this. And then because this says if I use this ability, which I did, then I'm going to have to use it as a vice. So it says a player to your left passes you a vice card from their life deck. In this case, there's no vice card, so it doesn't hurt me. Whenever you draw a comma card, you're just going to draw another one and put it into your hand. Uh, and then you're going to pass a turn. The next player is going to get a chance to go. Lust over here is going to look at the cards in his hand. And like I said, once again, he's got his, oh, he's got his, all these karmas in there. He should not have them, which I, you have to go ahead and put them back in some way, draw three more. Um, and hopefully I don't get any karmas, but Anyway, I think you might even have to read before you put the ending cards in, you might have to make sure nobody gets karmas. But let's go ahead and try that again. So anyway, much better. I'll go ahead and play a minus 15, but I can play it face down on somebody because I'm able to play cards face down. So this guy is not going to minus 15, even though he doesn't know it. And after that, he will draw his card. Now, if it was a karma card because it was face down, it will tell you that you're going to ignore the karma cards and just simply draw. And then, of course, the next player will get a chance to go. Looking at his hand, he'll play a minus five on somebody. He'll play it on Lust over here. Whenever you play a minus five, you get to draw two cards when you play the card, which is nice. And then you'll draw an extra card to end your turn. And the game's going to keep going on like that until finally the ending cards are drawn. When that happens, you'll tally up all the cards and points in front of you, uh, even if they're face down. And you're going to see who has the most points uh, in the positive, And that person will win. The only difference is if there's a religion that's a harbinger, in which case you're basically going to have the most red and you can win that way. Uh, the last thing I talked about is morality cards. Uh, when you play these cards, you can play them at any time and do what they say. Sometimes they'll target cards, other times they'll target players. Sometimes they're going to do interesting things like, let's see here, uh, choose a new target for the current card being played. That's pretty useful, right? This will let you draw three cards and this will discard a vice card from any life deck. So if I wanted to, I could play this on this and discard it. So these morality cards are very, very useful. Uh, then let's go ahead and look at, of course, your religion cards. Buddhist, if you have an equal number of vice and virtue cards, you get plus 75. So if I had three red and three blue at the end of the game on my side of the field, I get plus 75 in the blue. Pretty useful, right? And then what else do we have here? Uh, we have got a, there you are. Uh, we have got an agnostic. Uh, five and 10 point cards don't affect you regardless of the color. And then this one over here is the Harbringer. If you draw an end card, basically the end of the game card, you get plus 75 to your total. So that's also useful, but you have to be the one that draws it. And anyway, that's the basic idea of the game. Get to the bottom, keep your life points or your uh, your karma <laughs> as, as uh, high as possible, or your virtue as high as possible, I should say, and keep your vices as low as possible and uh, win the game of saved and get into heaven. There's only one that can do it though. Will you be the one? So, save the game. That's basically how you play the game in the description below if you want to check it out. What do I think about the game? Well, it's really fun. It is a take that game in nature, and usually those games are kind of mm, okay, whatever to me. You know, you go back and forth hitting each other. But this one has a lot of unique aspects. Playing cards face down is kind of cool. Or, of course, you have the religion cards that you're trying to save. You have your character cards that you can choose to skip your action, do something that it tells you to do. Like maybe you can play two cards on yourself, or you can discard one of your vices if you don't play it that turn. So you have different options. There's also not a lot of losing turns in the game, which is nice. Uh, maybe one or two take an additional turn. But because the turns are so quick, it doesn't bother me at all. And also, when you're playing these cards, you have to determine who has the most and who has the least and how you're going to determine where you put your cards on players. Because, yeah, you want to get rid of the cards in your hand, especially the red ones. You want to have all the blue in front of you. But at the same time, if you keep giving cards to a player uh, that is not really interested in getting more cards, they might start trying to mess with you specifically. So it's about laying down a fair amount of red fire on everybody as much as possible and keeping yourself just above. Also, of course, keeping your religion secret that might benefit you some way at the end of the game as well as utilizing your power on your character card as best as you possibly can the morality cards are cool because sometimes they target players or they target cards sometimes they just target yourself and you get to draw cards you get bonuses and all that kind of stuff and uh that's nice as well because they're basically played as instants and they can affect the game as well so holding on to those cards is very useful they don't hurt you at the end of the game either another thing to note too is karma cards playing red cards is awesome especially when you play a really big fat one on somebody and they have to, they have, they're forced to keep that card until they get a morality or the, the game ends but 
when you play red cards, you might be suffering from karma because the next card that pops up, if it's a karma card, it might make you do something negative. Now, helping people, meaning yourself, if you do that and you flip over a card and it happens to be a karma card and it's on the blue side, which is good usually, it'll give you some kind of benefit. Will it, will it be stealing a uh, virtue from another player, drawing cards from players' hands, getting an extra turn, all these great things. And there's combos that can happen because every time you draw one of those cards and you do what it says, afterwards you'll draw an additional card. And if that's another one, same thing, rinse and repeat. So there's some combinations going on. It's quick and it's fast. And the first time we played this game, I was like, oh, I like this game. It's really fun. And then everybody else around me was like, another, another, let's play again. And so I'm like, all right, let's go ahead and play it again. We played it again. And the characters change the way the game is played. The different types of characters do matter and how you utilize them. Some of them I think are a little better than others, which would be probably my, my critique in the game. Playing cards face down is so fun and so far, very, very powerful because nobody really knows what you're playing down. While other ones are kind of cool, you can skip your turn and get rid of a bad red card in front of you. That's more situationally useful. I like the way they have game changing mechanics. And always you're gonna be playing differently is how you wanna play. Luckily, the most important part of this game is simply debating with other players and haggling. You can you could probably give me that red card, but if you don't, I won't play a card on you that might be very, very high next round. And you can use that back and forth with players. And they're like, oh well maybe I'll give it to him instead. And he goes, well, I might have something worse in my hand. And so now you're like, maybe I'll just play a blue card myself. In addition, playing lower cards is going to be beneficial as well. Sometimes those tens and fives will affect a religion that just, whatever, no big deal. And other times, fives are going to give you draw cards. You want to draw cards, but you don't want to hoard too many cards because what happens is if maybe you have a character that says you can trade hands with the player at any point in time once a game, but the game ends before you use that ability and you're stuck with 40 cards in hand, and now you have negative 500 points, you're definitely not going to be saved. But Overall, a fun little game. If you like Take That style games, a little bit of a twist, a little bit of added uh, characters and religions, all that extra bonus stuff that comes in these kind of games, this one does a good job. It's above and, above and beyond a lot of the Take That games I've played, and it's fun. Uh, another thing to note too, on the more neutral side, is a lot of the cards in here have some kind of language, whether it be um, F words or S words or all that kind of stuff. So when you're playing on cards, uh, playing flavor on uh, players. So for instance, one of them says like, hail Satan, but not Satan, you know what I mean? Uh, you play that on a player. Saying that is super fun. Like when, for us adults, we were having a lot of time playing them on each other. It has that cards of humanity feel when you're playing them on other players, but it's just flavor. But all the different cards have different flavor. And there's a ton of different cards in here as to what they do and what they say. I donated my used uh, fun time toys uh, because I was a person who didn't partake in getting down. Um, I only wore Crocs because F you, so on and so forth. A bunch of different reasons why you're going to be playing certain cards in this game. Saved. A fun little game, but probably not for younger kids um, with the language involved. But otherwise, I think you'll enjoy it. Definitely take a look down below in the description for Saved if it's something you're interested in. Overall, a fun take that game. One that I'm definitely be playing more and more of because a lot of my friends that have been joining me that just started playing games really dig these take that card games. And this one is one of their favorites.